welcome back to another episode of Geeky Analysis. This week, we'll be diving back into the Stranger Things universe and exploring the extensive power set of Jane Hopper, aka Eleven. Enjoy! Overall, Eleven's lived a very tragic life no child should. Since birth, she was a test subject to part of the MK Ultra spin-off project known as Project Indigo, which aimed to raise children possessing unearthly abilities against their will in order to turn them into living weapons to fight the Soviet Union. Development of the children, as well as the project itself, was overseen by Dr. Martin Brenner. He headed both MK Ultra and Indigo. Eleven develops a lot slower than most children her age, due to the numerous experiments she was forced to participate in. Her communication was very limited, and she could hardly read or write. All Eleven knew was how to use her powers and kill, as that was Brenner's sadistic main focus. This left massive repercussions that lasted years after her escape from Hawkins' lab in 1983. Anyway, let's get into exploring Eleven's fascinating power set. Telekinesis is one of Eleven's most recurrent abilities and most notable, being used too many times to count. She was capable of manipulating objects, people and creatures with her mind. There was no limits to, as to what Eleven could do. Her telekinesis was amplified by her emotions, becoming stronger and far more powerful when she became enraged, scared or in pain. Eleven was able to lift objects much larger and heavier than herself, even while in motion. For example, she flipped a Hawkins power and light van into the air. Eleven was also able to move a train car towards her as well as kill a demodog. This side of her telekinesis could be used to harm and kill people too. For example, Levin squeezed Troy's bladder and caused him to, well, wet himself, as well as snap his arm later on. In addition, Levin has thrown people against walls on multiple occasions, snapped people's necks, and turned the brains of CIA agents into soup. A subpower, if you will, to her telekinetic abilities is levitation. Although not as extensive as the former, Eleven could suspend people, creatures and objects in the air, making them levitate. Her first display of this was behind closed doors, by herself, when she made Mike's Millennium Falcon float. However, this ability is not restricted to objects. She could do it to people, including Mike and Billy, as well. This included herself. One of Eleven's most intriguing powers is her sixth sense, known specifically as extrasensory perception. This power allows Eleven to gain information and recognise people without having met them face to face, or even heard their voices. She was also able to sense someone's corresponding location without seeing them. This was the case for when she found Will, who was in the buyer's house but in an alternate reality version of the house in the Upside Down. Via extrasensory perception, Levin could seek out and find targets in locations other than her own. The range of this was vast, so vast in fact that she could search for an individual through dimensions with no boundaries. Levin was capable of this by entering the void, a dark space situated in her mind. However, she could only enter this plane when her senses had been deprived be it through being placed in a sensory deprivation tank, or blindfolded and hearing nothing more than white noise. This white noise can be caused by either a TV, multiple showers running at once, or multiple freezers humming in time. Through telepathy and used in tandem with her remote viewing, Eleven could mentally contact anyone she's searching for and finds in the void. One of her underused abilities Psychometry allows Eleven to gain information about a person by simply touching objects associated with them. This was the case when Eleven demonstrated the Upside Down using the Dungeons and Dragons board, where she correctly guessed the game piece Will used. She identified it as Demogorgon, which was correct. Eleven is capable of reading memories while in the void and in contact with an individual she's searching for. There were two examples of this. The first is with her mother, when Eleven wanted to know why Terry was in the vegetative state she was. Well, sort of. The second was with Billy, when Eleven wanted to know what made Billy who he was. Unlike with Terry, reading Billy's memories came out of consequences. 
Being possessed by the Mind Flayer at the time, Billy was able to search for Eleven and her friends, as she remained oblivious to this while searching through his memories, going as far back as his early childhood. Eleven could transmit the voices and sounds of people and creatures to other locations, such as electronic speakers, through technopathy. This was used simultaneously with her extrasensory perception. Portal manipulation, as the name would suggest, means that Eleven can manipulate portals, specifically those linking her world and the Upside Down. Eleven could open, close and expand portals. It was her who opened the gate in Hawkins' lab, as an example. However, this happened when she contacted the Demogorgon, and it's unclear as to whether that played a role in the gate's opening. To redeem herself a year or so later, Eleven also closed the gate, as witnessed by Hopper at the height of the conflict between Eleven and her friends against the Demogod Dogs and the Mind Flayer. She expanded a portal the Demogorgon initially opened in order to allow herself to fit through and return to her world after teleporting to the Upside Down upon the Demogorgon's demise. A power she used just once. Biokinesis meant that Eleven could manipulate bodies of living creatures to a certain extent. This was shown when Eleven disintegrated the Demogorgon at the same time of her disappearance. Although this ability is up for some debate, Eleven could teleport, whether it be intentionally or not. This is shown when she somehow made her way up to the Upside Down after defeating the Demogorgon. There is a chance that the Demogorgon played a role, but that's unclear. There is also a chance that the teleportation was an unintended consequence from Eleven exerting the amount of power she did. However, it's highly likely Eleven has no knowledge of this ability. And with that in mind, it appears we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, make sure to like and share the video, as well as subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss a video. It means a lot, helps the channel and motivates me to continue. Also, make sure to check out my Instagram and Twitter with the links to both being in the description. However, that's up to you. I hope to see you next week. Until then, however, have fun. Bye!